Welcome back to AutoCAD Mastery, your ultimate guide to mastering AutoCAD. In today's video, we will learn how to draw arcs in detail for beginners using AutoCAD. For this exercise, a drawing with some auxiliary lines and points has been created to help you understand the differences between the various ways of creating an arc. As always, we will start with the different ways of activating the tool. The Arc tool can be found in both the Draw menu and the ribbon. We look at the Home tab and the Panel Draw. Of course, we can just type the word Arc in the command line and press Enter to activate it. As I have already mentioned, I prefer using the ribbon to activate these tools. Under the icon in the ribbon, there is an arrow. By clicking this arrow, a drop-down menu with all the available ways to create an arc appears. The first option is creating an arc by simply defining three points, the starting point, an intermediate point, and an ending point. I will select this one, but before I begin, I will zoom in enough to see the first example better. Then I will open the object snap list, which is in the status bar, and make sure that the node snap is checked. The node snap pulls a cursor to points, and I will need the snap since, as you can see, certain points have already been placed in the drawing. Now. I will click the arrow again, and notice that once I'm close to a point, my cursor is being pulled on it. I will click on the first point to start the arc, then on the second to specify a random point of the arc, and then on the third one to end the arc. When the arc is finished, the tool deactivates automatically. I will plan to move the view to the right, and then I will open the arcs drop-down menu again. This time, I will select the start, center, and end option. With this one active, I will click on the first point to define the start of the arc, the second will be the center, and the third the end point. However, when my cursor goes to the third point, I notice that this is not the arc I wanted to create. The direction is wrong, so in order to fix that, I will hold the control key pressed while I click on the third point. The direction changed immediately, and now the arc is as I want it to be. The next option I'm going to select is the start, center, angle option. As you probably have guessed, with this option, we define the starting point of the arc, next its center, and finally the included angle. So I will start with the point on the right, then click on the one on the left, and then I will type the number 60 to define the angle and press enter to finally create the arc. Next on the list is the option start, center, length. After I select it, I will start with the point on the right, then click on the one on the left to define the start and the center, as I did in the previous option. Only this time, instead of the included angle, I will define the length of the arc. So I will type the number 30 to define the length, and then I will press enter to create the arc. Moving on to the next option, which is start, end, angle, I will start by clicking on the starting point, then on the ending point, and finally, I will type the number 150 to define the degrees of the angle. When I press enter, the arc I created appears. As you can see, this arc was created as simply as that too. Next on the list is the start, end, direction option. With this option, I have to specify the starting point and the ending point of the arc, and finally the direction that the starting point of the arc will be tangent to. So I will click on the right point to define the start, and then on the left to define the end. For the direction, I will make use of the dashed line that has been created in advance. By clicking on the end point of the auxiliary line, the start of the arc becomes tangent to this line. The last option that can be useful is the start, end, radius option. As you may have already understood, I will click on the first point to define the start of the arc, the second point to define the end of the arc, and then I will type the radius, which will be 25 for this example. The moment I press enter, this arc is created too. The rest of the options in the list are repetitions of the previous ones, except we need to define the center first instead of the start of the arcs. As for the last option, which is continue, it creates an arc that its starting point is tangent to the ending point of the last arc that was created in the drawing. Since it's not used often, I won't show you an example of it. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with others who might benefit. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more Auto CAD tips and tutorials. Hit the bell icon to get notified every time we upload a new video. If you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover, 
Leave a comment below. Thanks for watching, and happy drawing!